I used the limitations I had to design something pretty, essentially. Hi, Energy. I hope you have been doing great. Let people know who you are and what do you do. Yeah, so I'm Annie Chi, or I go by Annie Chi Designs, and I am a costume designer and cosplayer. I studied at Fanshawe College in London, Ontario, uh, in their three-year fashion design program, and I did their one-year postgraduate of costume production at their downtown campus. Really enjoyable really programs, cool. and I learned a lot about sewing, creating, drafting, so a lot of the technical side and a lot of the artistic side. So, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> As you grew up, you see a lot of, you know, maybe the TV shows or let be the comic books and different different things, right? You see all around you. When you see someone is doing something related to cosplay, right? it's very exciting and it's very interesting at the same time. But tell us something about the cosplay and uh, why is it that you are actually interested in the whole thing? Uh, so cos cosplay means the word costume and play together or costume and role play because you're role playing fictional characters or characters you've designed and having fun with it because that's the whole thing it's a thing that's for fun and for some people it becomes their job so i discovered cosplay when i was 12 years old when i first really had real internet access and i started cosplaying 10 years ago so when i was 13 and really i just kind of stumbled upon it one day when i was looking for a new background for my new computer I wanted a Legend of Zelda photo, and I found a photo that I thought was someone's like realistic painting, but then I found out it was a picture of a person in costume recreating a scene, and I was absolutely like, oh, I want to do this. And my mother and grandmother are both very involved, were, were both very involved seamstresses at the time, especially. And I went to my mom and said, I want to do costumes of these characters with my friends. And then from there, I continued to be interested in it, and it developed into basically loving making and sewing so much that I wanted to study it, essentially. My friends eventually dropped off and went on to different different artistic areas and mediums, but I stuck with it, and, well, now I do it quite regularly and even have a YouTube channel all about it. I understand from this says that means um, let it be your family, let it be your friends, and that to be the, the culture, for example, right? It has a good amount of influence on what you choose as your career option or something exactly. which you love, right? Exactly. It's something I definitely really enjoyed. as a When I was just a little kiddo enjoying dressing up as these characters I enjoyed from video games and anime, I was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, this is fun. But then I realized it actually could be a career path. And now that I'm graduating, didn't help with job searching very much considering all the theaters are temporarily closed down but i have since landed a job in fashion that i'm that really awesome. excited for so like it it does have paths and different areas where you can take that hobby and develop it in a way in school to then do something really cool as a career so i'm really excited about that so i would say like one of the most interesting things which i understand from from the discussion is um, it is something where you have to balance uh, the things between the real world and the fantasy fictitious world right so so if i'm looking at 10 different characters i may see a good character and a bad character right mm -hmm. and i may make up my mind in a way that oh this is good and this is bad and if someone sees and looks at me um, wearing a specific type of costume they may judge you in different ways for example uh, so how do you balance such things so something I've kind of developed is I really have to start looking at people in costume not as the characters that they're dressed up, which can be a, it's a, it's a skill all of its own. Because sometimes when you first meet someone, they're in a specific character or they're known for a specific character, it can be really hard to kind of like tear the real them off the fake them. But it usually has like the fake them being the cosplay. Because no matter what, if you're dressed as a character, you're not yourself at that point. You're still a person in the costume, but you're portraying someone totally different. You can portray a villain without actually being a villain, for example. I know the sweetest people enjoy being the villains just because it's kind of fun, but they don't start actually mean or evil while in the costumes. So a lot of it is just getting to know the people in the costumes, but it's important to realize that just because someone is dressed as a certain archetype of character doesn't mean they're like that in real life. It takes a little bit of time to develop 
to figure that mm-hmm. out. Because as a kid, you definitely like start associating that person with that character. So it's it's something like I guess after a while you start to remember, and then you start to see that person dressed as different characters because it's mm-hmm. a big community, but it's a small community, right? So right. you really just have to start so, getting to know the people. So that is this fine line which you have to always, you know, keep into your mind while you are doing the different things, right? Yeah. So and put yourself in their shoes as well because. You know very well that you're dressed as a character, and you're not like that character in real life all the time. So, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a skill that takes time to develop there. Okay, and um, would you like to tell us something about the design process? Is it like you do your designs by yourself, or is it that you outsource the things and someone else makes it for you? So, most of what I do when it comes to cosplay is I cosplay already created characters from the medias that I like. So, I do a lot of Legend of Zelda costumes because I love the Legend of Zelda games a lot. I have a giant collection curio shelf over here. I don't want to talk about how much money that I probably spent over the past 10 years on Zelda merchandise, but I love these characters a lot. So, I oftentimes look at the characters, look at their designs, and then I have to figure out how I would essentially translate that into real life. But sometimes I do design my own designs of real life characters. And off, the reason I have Annie Chi designs in my name is because even though I don't always post about it, I do actually do a lot of original designs, just not always posted them because my illustration skills are not equal to my sewing skills. But when it comes to design, I, I usually try- time, right? It's not exactly. something which you learn at once. Exactly, yeah. So it comes to original designs, like my original um, Zelda cosplay. That one, the design process can always be a little different. Sometimes there's a thing that inspires you. In that case, I had my mom's entire fabric shelves to look through. And I found fabrics that I thought, this could be really cute as a Zelda cosplay. But I didn't have the exact fabrics I needed for any of her actual canon designs in any of the games. And then I found a few patterns that she had, and then ideas started to turn. I, I used the limitations I had to design something pretty, essentially. Other times, again, it would be like an item or a specific character. Something about them inspires me. But in that one's case, it was the things I had made the wheels turn and the design come out eventually kind of idea. So the design so, process is always different a little bit. but And it's time-consuming, and it has to be very creative, I believe, right? Oh, yes. That particular design I had I think three or four sketches before I actually finalized what I wanted to do same with anything else usually there's a lot of a lot of process yeah because I just feel like at that point it would just be a lot of me just sketching and that probably wouldn't be as interesting yeah there's one more thing I mean when we talk about the cosplay it's more or less like the performance art right Mm -hmm. so you have a number of beautiful costumes you have accessories for example Mm -hmm. and um, you have the designs So it is an entire process, right? Would you like to give us one more example where you use uh, different types of accessories and things and then you come up with the final design? Sometimes I have to redraw a character and then I have to do the research on what that garment they're wearing would translate into real life because sometimes those garments don't exist or sometimes they're based on something real and I have to figure out how to make that real thing look like something that doesn't exist because a lot of characters are wearing crazy things that aren't real or based on how garments actually work in real life. So it takes a lot of research. I have tons of costume history books that I sometimes refer to and see what is the closest possible thing to this strange garment that doesn't already exist kind of idea. So I do a lot of research. Again, the schooling does really help because we've gone over how to take something, an idea, like a simple idea and then turn that into a garment that would work. That is a whole thing that we've done about um, creating patterns and stuff like that. So yeah, that those skills are definitely very helpful for translating fictional fantasy things that are impossible and then turning it possible. So that that's almost exactly how fashion design programs work. They're kind of like, how do we take a concept make it real that's the entire that is almost that is impressive that is impressive and uh, i I believe a lot of hard work too yes does take a lot of work there is one more important thing when you did talk about the resources so if i have to go to school or university for example 
The first thing is the finance, right? Is it like you're spending a lot of money on that? Is it that something an average person can do? Or is it something which is beyond the capabilities of a normal average person? I definitely think anyone can do um, costume making, fashion making, anything anything sewing related. Of course, it does take a lot of resources. So if you don't want to do everything by hand, you're going to need a sewing machine. You're going to need an iron. And depending on how fancy you want to get, you might need to get expensive materials. But as a child, I was using all things that I had in my mom's in my mom's stash, her little sewing room, which was a lot of stuff. It's actually quite an amazing sewing room to have available to me. But not everyone has that available to them. Um, but there's still there's always fabric sales. Fabricland here in Canada usually has some really good sales going on every once in a while. So if someone just pays attention to that kind of stuff and then pays attention when their machines are on sale, looks at second hand. I personally have a resource back in my hometown, uh, a store called Drew Sewing Center, where they have second hand machines for sale. They have first hand ones for like brand new ones for sale. They will like if I'm looking for something in particular, they will let me know when it becomes available when someone brings one in for sale kind of idea. So you just need to look out for places like that. And then again, if you're looking for something in particular and it's not on sale right now or it's not in the store, like they can help you figure out when that comes in. They'll let you know when it's on sale because these mom and pop shops kind of idea really are the best useful. resources for that. Yeah. And of course, nowadays we're really lucky that with YouTube, with vlogs, with you, with um people's blogs on how to do stuff, you don't necessarily need to take fancy lessons on how to sew and how to make because people are just so helpful with their resourcefulness and putting it all out online. So that's really helpful. I mean, formal lessons help for sure to have someone one-on-one -on -one in person showing you how to do it. But depending on your resourcefulness level, you don't have to pay for lessons because a lot of it's already online, which is super helpful and super kind of the people who put it out there. So you mean the formal schooling has its own importance, but at the same time, if you really want to do that thing, I mean, actually nothing that actually can stop you, right? Essentially, yes. Yeah. In my opinion, if you really want to do something, you, you can go out and do it. You can, it takes practice, might take time and might take some, a little bit of money saving, but it's definitely doable. And school helped me a lot. But there are people in my field of work who actually don't have the formal schooling. What the schooling does is it gives you a little bit more resources. It teaches you how to do it faster. And it teaches you how to do it in the more formal way that the industry uses. But I know a lot of people like in theater and such who don't have that background. They learnt on their own and stuff. The only thing that hinders them is sometimes they want that they want that diploma for you to get the job. You mean like a credential? Yeah, people with the credentials are gonna have the advantage that they've practiced it, because at school you're spending like, you have eight hours of homework per class almost, right? And a lot of that yeah, is yeah, sewing, sure. a lot of that is designing and creating. So you get really good really fast, because the more you practice, the better you get. Practice makes perfect. So they're getting a lot of, people in school are getting a lot of practice in it at a very quick pace. So they're getting very, very good, very, very fast compared to someone who might be doing it on their own, might not have the time and such because they're not doing it in a formal place and they don't have the credentials. But sometimes if they're very, very skilled and they hone their skills a lot, they can get those jobs still. It just, you have to put a lot of work into it, almost an equal amount to the school. The school gave me like a f foundation, a format and like an organization to it, as with if I had done it on my own, it would be, I've been scatterbrained and all over the place. So it gives you a direction and that structure, right? Yeah, and also experience because like in fashion, you're learning how to do like fashion shows, you're learning how to make a proper design line, which is not something you might be able to experience if you were all doing it on your own. There's, there's pros and cons to it, of course, like just mm -hmm. like with any other field of work. I mean, you're not gonna be, Unlike other fields, like if you want to be a doctor, go to school for it. <laughs> but with this one, if you want to be a fashion designer or a costume designer, you don't necessarily need the schooling for it mm -hmm. kind of idea. Just like people who do cosplay, a lot of them just do that for fun. They're not doing it because they want to be a cosplayer. They just practice it on their own time kind yeah. of idea. So you, learn, so you learn by doing it, actually, rather than spending a good amount of time in formal schooling in this case. Yes. 
yeah, you definitely, no matter what, you definitely need to do stuff on your own time to get the practice and skills to do elaborate costumes, pretty things, and such like that. One more thing would be, like, what types of different countries do you think the cosplay is a good career option? So cosplay and costume, I think, is an important thing throughout the world, or at least for more developed countries, because there will be movies set in all these different places. Like, New Zealand didn't have much of an industry, and then suddenly they had the Lord of the Rings film there. And now there's quite that the industry was, over there, That was there, a right? good one. I watched like, multiple times. Oh, same. It's, my, it's one of my favorites. They brought in staff, but they also had some local people come in to help with some of it, because it's just easier to do so. So all you help in job creation, that's what you meant. Mm-hmm. And cosplay is, like, as a hobby or as a profession, because people do cosplay as their profession, it's a worldwide thing. I don't know if you've heard of it, but there's something called the World Cosplay Summit. So there's 40 participating countries in it, and every year it grows. And these That's countries a host a competition. They choose the best team, a team of two, always, always a team of two. They choose the best team in this competition, and that team will represent the country in Japan for the final competition, like an Olympics of cosplay. That is so interesting. So all these countries go in, and there's 40 and counting. Every year it grows. The first year they had like 13 countries involved. Last time there was 40. There are countries I haven't even heard of that are involved, like small countries involved in this competition because there's cosplay growing in that country. It's insanely cool and you get to learn a lot about different countries through this because the people involved, of course, are sharing about cosplay in their country. It's the whole idea of that competition is they're trying to get these countries together so they can learn from each other. It's that should be a very good learning experience in the sense when you have um, different people from 20 different countries and come up as a team. And they exactly, work as a yeah. Team. And very exciting experience, I would say. Yeah, and as like, I haven't, obviously I have not been Team Canada before. I, I've participated in the preliminary competition, but it's very hard to win because everyone who's competing to get that Team Canada... I hope you'll do it soon. I, I intend to try again, soon. yeah. <laughs> And but like as a someone who's only viewed this competition, I'm learning about other countries because they're sharing to the public as well, not just with each other. It's really fascinating to learn about my subculture around the world. That is a good thing. I would say it's something where you have to be more and more creative, right? Because you'd have to make something which is completely or partially in a very fantasy world, right? So you're exactly. trying to mix that thing into reality with reality. That is, I, I think, the best part of your profession. Is there anything else which you would like to share with people who are interested into taking cosplay as their career? Um, well, if you're interested in costuming as a career, definitely do your research. Definitely take the time, look things up. If school is an option for you or you want it, look into the schools available to you. They're popping up a lot more recently, which is wonderful. So definitely do the research. And if you want to just try doing it on your own, or if you just want to do cosplay or costuming as a hobby, there are so many resources out there nowadays. It's so helpful. If you want to look up some information on making costumes or watching how other people make theirs, check out the CosTube community because over 100 people making costuming-related content on YouTube is pretty amazing. (laughs) And they can teach you all sorts of things. Thank you so much for sharing your views, and I hope it helps a number of people. And at the same time, I wish you all the best and good luck. Thank you so much. You as well. Thank you for your time.